the client needs to connect the first building to the second building and the third building to come up with the internal network. The distance within this building is not so far, the maximum length is less than 200 meters. But the speed is crucial, since he needs to transfer the large file within this building. 1 gigabit per second speed is not acceptable, he's looking for at least 10 gigabit per second speed. He plans to use the fiber optic cable. It makes sense, since the fiber optic cable can handle higher speed beyond 100 meters. How to choose the network equipment to come up with the network with the backbone speed up to 10 gigabit per second? We will pick these links to demonstrate in this video. Before we dive into the detail, I want to say we do have three online courses. It covers the IP cameras, access points, fiber optic cables. I've put the link in the description below. It's completely free. Let's start from the fiber optic cable. I use this fiber optic cable to connect the device in the first building and the device in the second building. This is the factory pre-made fiber optic cable. The connectors are made in the factory with the pulling eyes. We can pull this fiber optic cable over the conduit directory. It's the single mode four strand fiber optic cables. There's totally four strands from these cables, and we have connected these four strands to these coppers. And these two strands are the patch coat linked to the device in the first building. We do have two green connectors. They're designed for the power we are not going to use in this case. Let's move to the rack. This is the 12 port SFP Plus fiber optical switch. Single port can support up to 10 gig speed. This is the SFP Plus slot. It's empty since we still need another device called SFP transceiver to work with the fiber optic cable. The SFP transceiver converts the optical signal to the electrical signal and vice versa. Let's install this SFP transceiver. And now we can pick one of these strands from the primary fiber optic cable and connect it to this SFP transceiver. We have planned out the SFP slot in this fiber optical switch in case we may need to upgrade the system or connect more devices from different buildings. Alright, the setup is ready in the first building. Let's move to the second building. The setup is pretty similar in the second building. We take this fiber optical terminal box to manage the pre-made fiber optic cables. There's four strands. We took a patch code to link two strands to the device in the second building. Here we choose the 24 port PoE plus plus switch. It outputs 90 watts through the single port PoE port. And there's four SFP plus slot. It supports 10 gig speed over a single SFP plus slot. Let's take one of these slots. It's empty. We need to install one more device called SFP transceiver, just like what we did in the first building. Let's insert this SFP transceiver and pick one of the strands and connect it to this SFP transceiver. You see the indicators on, which means this PoE switch has established the network link with the fiber optical switch in the first building. Why we choose the PoE switch? Since the PoE switch can output the power through this PoE port, it can power the low voltage devices such as the IP cameras, access point, VoIP phones. We just need one cable to connect these devices to this PoE switch, and this PoE switch will provide the power and data exchange with these devices. It's quite convenient, right? But you may worry whether this PoE switch will work with the non-PoE equipment like the computer or not since we do have the power through this single PoE port, right? Don't worry, the PoE switch is a smart device. It will perform the power handshaking before it releases the power to the edge device. Let's say if we connect a computer, the non-PoE equipment to one of these PoE ports, then this PoE switch will conduct the power handshaking and send a signal to the edge device. Then our computer, since it doesn't need the power, right? So it cannot give the correct feedback to this PoE switch. Then the PoE switch will provide only data exchange. It will work as the regular switch without the power. So the PoE switch can work with the PoE equipment or non-PoE equipment. That's the reason why we choose the PoE switch in the second building. 
Just one last thing. Since we have the second strand not used, can we do anything with this second strand? Such so connect this second strand to the another SAP Plus slot, then come up with the trendy git speed? Let's try it. Before we connect the second strands to the second SAP slot in this switch to try to increase the bandwidth to 20 gigs per second, we need to enable the lean aggregation in this PoE switch. What is the lean aggregation? The lean aggregation will combine multiple network ports into a single logical port. Eventually, it just like what as, what as the single port. First, I want to say, not all the PoE switch or switch support lean aggregation. You need to check the specification of your switch. Without the proper protocol, if you try to connect the two network switch by using two cables, if you create a broadcasting stone and a dead load, and if you crash your network inventory. Now, let's log into the built-in web server in this switch and enable the lean aggregation. This is the login interface of the built-in REST server in the PoE switch. The default IP address is 192.168.2.1. If you see an error message after you type in this IP address in your browser, you need to configure your computer and set the subnet to 2. This is very important. The default username and password is ADMI and hit the login. Then find the switch configured and go for the port channel and the port channel group. You need to create a group and aggregate the two ports into one. Give a number to the leg and the name, let's say 10, let's say 20 git link. And we need to pick the port we want to aggregate it. We are going to use the port 25 and 26. These two ports are the SAP Plus slot. Single port can support 10 gig speed after we aggregated these two ports. Then we are going to get 20 gig speed between these two buildings. It applies. One last thing, don't forget to click the save before we close the browser. All right, that's the configuration for the second building. Let's move to the first building. I've done exactly the same configuration in the fiber optical switch in the first building. What we need to do next is install this SFP Plus transceiver to the SFP Plus slot, then connect this extra fiber optic strands to this SFP Plus transceiver. Inventory, we got a 10 gig bandwidth in both buildings. Remember, we do have some spare fiber optical strands we not use, right? If you want to increase the speed to 30 gig per second, even 40 gig per second, what we need is just pull this fiber optical strands, then connect to this new SAP Plus transceiver in this SAP slot, then we can increase the speed. We just complete the network setup between the first building and the second building. What we need to do next is pull a fiber optic cable to link the first building to the first building and use the exactly same network configuration for these switches. Remember to enable the link aggregation to increase the network speed to 20 gigabit per second. If you want to build a robust system, you can pull a fiber optic cable to link the second building to the first building. Since all these switches support ERPS protocol, it's the ring network topology. You can enable the ERPS for all these switches to come up with the ring network topology. What is the advantage for the ring network topology? Imagine if the devices in the first building is just done, we still will have the network connectivity between the second building and the first building. All right, that's all for today's video. If you have any question, please post a message in the comment section below.